Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be looking over Marco Rose's 4231 that he's currently using at Leipzig and did use at Borussia Dortmund. If you guys do enjoy these tactic videos then please do leave a like on this one and please do subscribe to the channel. But let's get into this tactic and break it down. So to start with, we always do this little segment of the video. We do a little overhaul, obviously, of the manager, a little, just a little talk about him. Obviously, a manager that was at Dortmund, re previously went to Leipzig, obviously, a team which I'm very fond of. So very happy to see him there. Obviously, setting up with a 4-2-3-1. With this sort of system, it is quite a balanced system. Um, obviously, you've got your four at the back. Then you've got your sort of two deeper players. And then you've got your three across midfield. Then you're one up front. Um... And for me, the style of play is actually really good in, in the way that he sets up, really. There is quite a bit of pressing involved in it. Um, playing out the back is crucial for him. Um, playing out the back is a necessity, something that he does with all of his teams. So you are going to be seeing a lot of that. In terms of the passing directness, it is traditionally quite short passing, but occasionally there is the odd long ball over the top, especially when he was at Dortmund. If you imagine having Haaland in behind, you're not exactly not going to play a long ball over the top to him. Um, so the passing directness is just going to simply be on standard for this one so there there is pretty much a nice mixture of long not long ball but of sort of sort of long passes but also you get to see some very nice play especially building out from the back the results i got with this tactic were actually really really good i always find when i use a 4-2-3-1 the results are always quite consistent because it is probably one of the best tactics you can actually use obviously this one is purely designed to replicate this guy so things are going to look slightly different in different areas but let's get into the first tactic test is going to be with Salzburg. So we tested with Salzburg and obviously this league works quite uniquely in my opinion because you play a bit of the league then there's a bit of a break then you carry on and obviously then you've got Europa competitions and stuff like that. It was interesting to test in this division. Quite a fun way it's laid out in my opinion. So Champions League we actually didn't qualify. We finished third but I wasn't really expecting to do so with this side. Um no disrespect, but they don't have the best team on paper compared to the other teams that were in the group. We do, however, obviously go into the Europa League, and unfortunately it was very close, but Napoli just edged us in that as well. But we did manage to do the double by winning the Admiral Bundesliga and the Unica OFB Cup, which obviously are two of the main trophies in this division, which we should be winning, and we definitely did quite comfortably as well, scoring 74 goals, ranking us the best, and only conceding five in the entire season. Now, this system is very good defensively. It's not obviously purely set out to be a defensive tactic, but the defendant is very good inside of this tactic. Obviously, the teams in this division aren't the best. Rapid Vienna are quite good as well, as well as Lask. But um, we just done really well against the top sides of this system. So this is definitely a good tactic to use to play against a really, really close team to you. So say if you're Liverpool, play this up against like a Man City, you'll definitely match up and should just about edge it. In terms of the actual stats then for the players, in terms of goals, we're going to have 26 coming in from Fernando, 25 coming in from Sesco. Um, we're going to have... Well, Sesco, she, she, she should be at Leipzig. Joining. Oh, okay. So he's, he did... We actually have him for this season. Okay, it makes sense. I was going to say. 11 goals coming in for Okafor. Cargard there coming in with 11. Um, Koita coming in with 11 as well. 7 for Woba. Um, 6 coming in for Sawald. And um, Adamu coming in with 5. Assists, we've got 18 for Okafar. Um, Kergaard coming in with 9. 9 for Fernando. Adam, Admu coming in with 8. Um, Adamu, sorry, coming in with 8. Um, Capaldo coming in with 8 as well. And Sesco coming in with 7. So the goals are quite well balanced in between the attacking players. I did forget we actually had Sesco there. Um, but the goals are very well spread out. Probably why um, having a player like Sesco in this really did help. But um, with this, which I really do like, is obviously you have your sort of free attacking um, midfielders obviously they're almost wingers and um, they can sort of come narrow as well so you they could be three central attacking sort of midfield players but in this scenario there's like a left midfielder a center attacking midfielder then a right mid um, attacking midfielder and they all got involved with the goals and the assists which is exactly what you want to be seeing you never want to see just your striker getting the goals because then if anything does go wrong with him it's a real real big issue you got on your hands obviously Fernando actually becoming the top goal scorer um, at sort of an attacking midfield position on the left I believe this guy did play but um very very good stats in terms of the players what about the, the actual team though let's have a little look into the data hub so team attacking 2.31 goals a game very happy with that pass completion again this is what i was talking about at the start there is going to be a bit of short passing going on especially building out from the back into the midfield areas 91 percent there 
In terms of defending, very, very solid. Obviously, I knew this was going to be very good. 0.16 conceded a game um, compared to the 0.37 expected. Good tackle win ratio as well in this one. And not as many fouls as some of the other tactics that I have released does contain. So to be fair, defensively, very, very solid. And obviously scoring quite a few goals per game as well in this division. Um, but like I said, I knew it was going to be very good defensively, especially with this test because... There are only, there's probably like three teams that are quite good in this division. Um, we are really going to test the defensive quality of this tactic when we go over to the next save, which is going to be with Borussia Dortmund. So, we then tested it with Borussia Dortmund, and to be honest, we got very similar stats in the fact that we were the best at scoring goals of 108 and the best at conceding, only letting in 25. Winning the Bundesliga very, very comfortably. Um, I'm not sure what happened to Bayern. We're going to have a little look at their team to see what they've got. Um, it's full strength. I've not sold anyone. Um, it's full strength. There's nothing wrong with it. So I don't know why they had such an off season there. And also within the Super Cup versus Bayern as well. Do get knocked out in the third round against Bayern in the Pockle. And unfortunately, we matched against a very tough Manchester City team in the Champions League in the first knockout. In terms of squad stats then. So we're going to have 45 goals coming from a Demi. Obviously, a very, very, very good striker in this game. So does not surprise me seeing their numbers. 25 for Marco Royce, 15 for Reyna, Modest coming in with 11, Donny Marlon coming in with 6, 5 for Torgan Hazard, then it does drop off a little bit here. In terms of assists, we've got 21 for Guerrero, Bellingham coming in with 17, the best midfielder in the world coming up, 16 assists coming in for Marco Royce, Reyna contributing with 11, 11 for Ademi, 10 for Marlon, then quite a decent amount, you know, you've got a couple of four three fours, a few threes there as well, so again, we're seeing very similar, very, very um, similar effects, sorry, in the sense of like, Pretty much there are, what you're talking, one to four players that are heavily involved. These two up here are obviously the main goal scorers, but there are goals sort of coming from everywhere on the pitch, which is exactly what you want to be seeing, as I did mention. Um, there's several tactics which do rely purely on possibly one striker, the main striker getting all the goals, and it does work. But when he gets injured or, you know, if you lose him, um, it's very hard to replace him, obviously. So it is good to know you don't solely rely on goals coming from the striker. Obviously, I believe all tactics, your striker should be getting the most goals unless you are playing like a, a strikerless system or something like that. But um, obviously, striker, that is his job to get the goals. But it's always good to see attacker midfielders, left midfielders, right midfielders, even the deeper midfielders getting goals and contributing. In terms of the data hub then, team attacking, very nice to see. 3.18 goals per game. Pass completion, very high as well, sitting at 90.12, which is very good to see there as well. Again, um, going over the expectation of 2.66 there. Defending, again, very solid. This is what I said. This is going to be a more defensive test because we are playing in a tougher division. And obviously, we're not the favourites in this division either. Um, but still managing con to concede well under a goal a game, sitting at 0.74% compared to the 0.84% that was expected of us. Again, very low fouls per game, which is also very good. This is quite a disciplined style, of, um, style that he does play. Tackle win ratio sitting at around 78. If you round it up, 79, but still quite high considering as i did mention there are going to be there is quite a bit of pressing in this it's not maxed out but it is slightly higher um with pressing in this especially in the midfield areas to win the ball back and carry on with the way that he wants to play so there are going to be the occasional fouls in there because you are playing with quite an aggressive press you're not always going to get the perfect tackle in you at the end of the day but 0.74 conceded 3.18 goals going in it's a very good stat line and one which i'm happy with and this takes us in to the last team which is going to be his current side rb leipzig before we do see how we've done with rb leipzig though guys if you are enjoying this video so far then please do leave a like on this video and do subscribe to the channel and if you guys never want to miss an upload from me again please do hit the notification bell you can literally see it right next to the subscription button this way you're never going to miss when i go live when i upload a video do a community poll and much more I am currently running a FIFA, a FIFA, never a FIFA, a Football Manager 2023 giveaway on the channel, which can be found on the community tab. So that is a key example of why you should be turning on the notifications, because this way you would have got alerted for it right then. But let's get in to RB Leipzig and see how we done. So with RB Leipzig, very similar, very similar story to what we actually done with Dortmund, to be honest with you, except this time we were the second best at scoring goals. Um, but the best at conceding. So less goals conceded with RB Leipzig and slightly less scored. 
we actually made to we went all the way to the Champions League final to lose to Manchester United, which is a little bit gutting. But to get there with RB Leipzig is a massive accomplishment. Winning the Bundesliga as well and winning the Pokal as well. So two trophies and nearly winning the Champions League is pretty much a flawless season in my eyes in your first season with RB Leipzig. In terms of the squad stats, we're going to have 56 goals coming in from Tino Werner. Very, very good player that suits this division down to a T. 29 for Andre Silva, 16 for Nkunku. Olmo coming in with nine, Forsberg with eight, Willy Orban coming in with six, couple of five or five from Sabosloy, three from Paulson, and a little bit of a drop off there. In terms of assists, we've got 20 from Nkunku, 13 for Campbell, 12 coming in from Werner. He had one hell of a season. Um, 12 coming in for Olmo, 12 for Sabosloy, nine coming in for Conrad Lima from a more deeper position. Six for Klosterman as well, very good from him. Five for Forsberg, then a few fives down here as it goes down and down. So again, very similar story. Obviously, we're seeing goals from the striker. Well, Werner was actually playing on the left, believe it or not, um, when I did look at a few games. And it was actually going to be Andre Silva up top. That could have changed, um, but it is good. We got sort of three attacking players there, contributing with quite a few goals and assists, which is always good to see. Um, obviously, in this one, we did end up um, scoring less goals than we did at Borussia Dortmund, but we were better defensively, which does surprise me because Dortmund's defense is actually quite good on paper going into the data hub then <clears throat> team attacking 2.59 goals scored a game which is still very very good in this division with RB Leipzig just under 90% on this one with pass completion but still very impressive exactly what he wants to play he likes playing with the ball at his feet short passing and obviously as I said when there is a run in behind the ball does get found but especially playing out from defense is something which I've noticed I always watch games, always watch highlights of the managers that I make videos on. So obviously I want to know exactly what I'm talking about. And playing out from defense is a very, very key thing in his system. Going over to team defender then, very, very solid. 0.44 conceded, um, 84% with the tackle win ratio again, which is very, very good. Nearly sitting, or not nearly, but around the 85% mark. And to be conceded 0.44 when, you know, you're probably the a third if not four favorite team to actually win the Bundesliga in this division is very very good it's under half a goal a game if you do want to word it like that so you're conceding that and you're scoring 2.59 so the stats are always going to be in your favor and that is what it was that is why we were able to win the Bundesliga title so very very good stats and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick out a game from this save we're going to go over and look at some in-game 2d analysis and really break down how the system works now, I don't think there's any better game I could have picked out than this one because it shows what we were like against the top side in this division. And that is going to be Borussia Dortmund in what was a 6-1 win. Obviously, they do end up um, getting a goal, but this isn't perfect. You are going to concede the odd goal here and there, especially against a side like Dortmund. This is how it's going to line up then. So we just make sure that's right from the start. It is. So you're going to have your four at the back here. These are obviously going to be your two slightly deeper midfield players. I'm not completely deep like as in here, but I'm... Um, they are slightly pushed back and you're going to have your free sort of you one on your left which is going to be Werner as I did mention and Kunku centralized and it is going to be Campbell on the right then up top is going to be Andre Silva now what I'm going to do with this one we are going to watch the key highlights there is going to be a lot to get through so if I do find we've seen pretty much everything I want to see we will just simply watch the goals but I do want you guys to see a little bit of the pressing a little bit of the passing how it works and this is the perfect game to do that so going into the key highlights then, this one is just going to be a set piece, which unfortunately we didn't get too much going. Set pieces are very good with this system, so you are going to be pretty much bank, not banking, but you are going to be looking to score some set pieces, which is always an, a good addition to any tactic, really. So they have a throw in here. Again, the press gets applied pretty gently there. They're forced to go back with Bellingham. Shot to back, pushing up gently here. Um, again, Dortmund, I've got a very, very good side, so they are probably going to have a few chances on goal. Royce puts the ball over all the way wide there. Quite good here, though, in terms of the fact defensively, we have got sort of one, two, we've got the four in the box, but we've also got people that are marking like this player here, for example. Um, the only one position I'm worried about is number 11. So we are going to have a little look and see how that gets dealt with. It's going to go to him. It's actually a poor ball in, so Galashi does pick that up quite easily. Looks like then we are coming up to some type of goal here. It's going to be Galashi, Galashi sorry, going long with the ball. Great touch from Andre Silva. Carrying on going. And I mean, it's an absolute, absolute rocket. Um, They do have the, the license to do that with this. So, I mean, you are going to see the occasional long shot. But who have they got in goal? Koble. Um, don't actually know too much about him personally. I've heard of him. But again, a very good finish from Andre Silva. I'm a bit unexpected, to be honest with you. We then got a throw in with Halastenberg. 
few options on the ball. And Kunku, again, you're going to see a little bit of this pass and into Lima, back into Nkunku. Fantastic play. Run and run and tucks it into the bottom left corner. Obviously, Nkunku, one of, to be honest, one of the best Bundesliga players that are coming up. Such a good player. And hopefully we get to see him in the Premier League one day. But you could see there that little pass and move, little pass and move on the edge. And that is something you are going to see in this system because passing the short passing is key to it you are going to hit long passes occasionally so i hope we do get to see at least one of them um but if you don't just know that occasionally there is going to be a long ball played over the top because it's not strictly set to shorter passing it's going to be cabell there or Kobe with the ball there into hummels again a little light press coming on it's not the most intense press we do win it back there though with verna region very well and kunki with the ball just taking his time wonder ball over the top into campbell up to back into Andre Silva. What a move that is. And that is what you're going to see from the pass. So obviously, you saw the long ball go over the top. Um, obviously, what was going to be um to Campbell, who took it out wide, cut it back inside into Andre Silva. And that is going to be the goal scorer. So that just that occasional long ball, even if it's not directly to assist the goal, that assisted the assist, if that makes sense. So very crucial to have that on. It really is. It's a great way of playing football. In my opinion, they then do look like this could be a goal for them, actually. A ball into the box. Sloppy, to be fair. I'd rather concede a set piece because it doesn't really, um, you know, it's not a real worry on the actual tactic. It's more the set pieces, which obviously you guys can feel free to tweak. But we didn't concede too many from set pieces at all. Just in this game, funny enough, we actually did a, did, a, um, did end up conceding one. Sorry. We then go again. Um, They look a bit in a mess here, Dortmund, to be fair. Trying to play it out. We're putting a little light press on them here with number seven, number 18 coming up to him as well. As soon as they get the ball, they're under pressure. 33 closing him down, forced to play a long ball out into Campbell. Beautiful ball into Lima, ball through into Werner, and he's not going to miss that into the bottom right corner. And that is what we see so much with this system, guys. We put pressure on them, not too aggressive because it's not all about like a Jurgen Klopp proper high intense press. But the keeper got he got panicky, he got scared, he was forced to play a long ball out. We won it back, we read the play, and that resulted in a goal. And that's why I always like if I've got time to show you guys the key highlights instead of the goals, because you get to see where the goals come from instead of the ball just going in the back of the net. Again here, then this is going to look like a very interesting set piece. Olmo, a little ball over the top into Guavardio. A good touchdown, actually, into Alastenberg. Forces it back into Auburn. Again here, we're going to see a little bit of the pass and play build up. Good pass and going through here, actually, into Auburn, into Guavardio. Again, just taking a time on the ball. Very good passage of play, this into Werner. Goes through, and unfortunately, it is right at the keeper. But again, you're seeing how these chances do come about, how they get made, and it is really good to see going to be Dortmund then with a goal kick out all the way over into Reina. It's going to be Kostam and does kick it out. He keeps it on actually though. A little bit of a press but they do beat the press on this occasion through to a Demi who does put it wide. That's the one occasion in this game which they were able to beat the press quite well to be honest. A set piece from him there just goes over as well. So a little bit under the cosh there in terms of um how we were playing but no goal come from it so that's all that matters. Brandt the ball there in midfield into Emre Chan. Again, number 27 putting a little bit of pressure on here. He was literally touching Bellingham. Now, what we're going to see here is we're going to see number 32, which isn't going to let me click on him, should be coming quite close into a Demi. He is coming quite close into him. And then he plays the ball out to Hazard. And hopefully by the time that goes in, he's going to be back. He's going to be back. So we've got Gavardio. We're going to have Royce, um, oh, Orban, sorry, actually doing the defensive duty and Klosterman. And also a couple people on the edge to start that counter attack if needed. Because as much as I've gone on about short passing and stuff like this it is actually quite counter based as well this tactic so you are going to see yourself setting yourself up on the counter especially from set pieces a lot still with the ball here then out wide into bellingham the player you do not want to have on the ball pretty much just forcing him out in this position blocking the cross in as well so very good to see there andre silva wins the ball back very well so what we done out there wide was very good defending we just forced him to keep playing them one twos not really going anywhere then eventually when bellingham got the right amount of space we had a player throw his body on the line win the ball back the ball obviously went flying off which then andre silva quickly reacted and intercepted the ball alastenberg into andre silva great ball out into Werner onto the left hand side back into comrade lima wonderful ball over the top into Andre Silva who gets his goal and that is the beauty of playing the occasional long ball obviously short passing to build it up but then Andre Silva darted off in behind you have to find your strikers so when it, when a long ball is needed it is needed and just like that we get another goal from it it's going to be Dortmund with the ball here then pass slack on the right hand side the hood over the top poor ball again Klosterman winning the ball back very well and you can see instantly how these players counter-attack 
You've got Werner bombing down the left-hand side into Alastenberg, into Conrad Leimer. What a passage of play that is. A wonderful one to Alastenberg with the ball back into Conrad Leimer. Wonderful ball again into Sabosloy. Loads of space for Klosterman. All these Dortmund defenders are asleep. The Parson is too much for him. Unfortunately, Klosterman doesn't do the best there, but um, that's nothing down to really the play. Halastenberg there winning, winning the ball back, sorry, very well. She'll unfortunately get into it again. I just want to see where this highlight's going to. There's so much good play going on, but we're not seeing a shot at the moment. Forsberg back into Andre Silva. Is he going to have a crack? He does have a crack and hits the... Does that hit the post twice? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that hit the post twice? Because I've got no idea. It looked like it did. That was a strike, though. Fair play to him. Hummels, again, just hoping for the best. And this looks like it's going to be potentially the last goal of the game. Coming up to it anyway. So Bostoy gets the scraps. Loads of options here. He can play it here. He can play it here. Into Orban. Takes his time. Into Klosterman. Back into Sabosloy. Into Java. Into Andre Silva. Wonderful play. Haidar actually taking it quite wide there. Doing very well with the ball. Ball in. Into Andre Silva. And that is going to be the sixth goal. So that is a perfect game to show you highlights. Exactly how I want to show you how we play. You got to saw a great amount of how we win the ball back. How we force them into making mistakes. How the short passing works. And also how the long balls do work and why they are so crucial to have on in this system. So the last part of the video is going to be the part of the video you guys enjoy the most and why you guys all come by these videos is the actual tactic breakdown. So let's get into that and hopefully you guys give this a chance because trust me, it's a good tactic. So before we do break down the tactic, guys, please do leave a like on this video right now. I'm going to give you two seconds appreciate it just doing that alone helps the video gets found in the search algorithm it helps a lot guys it really does and obviously if you do want to support even further you can simply hit the subscribe button because there's plenty of other tactics if you guys like this tactic trust me there's a full playlist of tactics you'll definitely find one in there if you don't like this one so be sure to go and check out that playlist as well i'll try and leave it at the end of this video so then you guys can simply click on it and browse down there's loads of tactics from loads of the managers all the top managers in the world there is going to be a tactic on there and if there isn't you can comment below and i promise you i'll make it but let's break down this tactic on screen so this is going to be the 4231 we all know what a 4231 looks like we've all seen it um but this obviously is a little bit unique in some of the roles and in the way that it plays. So to start with, it's going to be balanced on the mentality, in possession, narrow with the width, play out of defence, overlap left, overlap right, higher tempo, standard pass and directness, mixed crosses, um, and be more expressive on the creative freedom section. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to centre backs and the full backs, and obviously with this one, I like to leave this as it is because then they, the goalkeeper sort of makes a decision for himself. Um, the only one I wouldn't recommend is rolling it out because I have seen a lot of mistakes with it. So I don't know if that's just me, but I have seen a lot of mistakes with that happening. But no, for me, just leave it as it is and it's pretty much flawless. Out of possession, you want to see a higher defensive line, high line of engagement with the offside trap. Most managers, when they use a higher defensive line, will use an offside trap. Standard with the um, defensive width, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and more often on the trigger press. Going over then to the player roles, the most important part of any tactic, really, um, because you can have all these right, but if you haven't got the player roles right, you, I suppose they're important as each other, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But sweeper keeper on the support duty, they're nothing too special, as always, just shorter passing selected for him. This goalkeeper rarely has to go long with the ball, so he does have to be good with his feet. Obviously, you want to see good passes to these back four here. To the right back then a full back on the support duty selected less often get further forward stay wider run wide with the ball and shorter pass and selected over to the left back then exactly the same less often stay wider get further forward run wide with the ball and shorter passing two center backs today and both of them are going to be ball playing defenders obviously playing out from the back is key in this system so i'm pretty sure you could have guessed they are both going to be ball playing defenders Exactly the same, so I'm going to show you one of them. Less often on the press and shorter passing is all you need for these. Going over to the midfield two, these are going to be the slightly deeper midfield players. One of them is very deep. Ball winning midfield player on the defend duty. 
balanced, marked tighter, stand a bit of directness. Again, because this guy will be that player who does ping the ball over the top. So having that selected is very, very helpful. Next to him, the role, which in my opinion, you should never change in this system, especially having a box to box is absolutely crucial. It just is a perfect mix of obviously having that defensive midfielder, but also having that extra man in the box going forward if needed. On the support duty, balanced on the press, marked tighter and standard. I don't tell him to do anything else because I want literally a perfect balance. I don't want him to get further forward because then he might not be back enough all the time when I need him. I don't want him to move into channels. I don't want him to go wide. I just want him to be a basic, basic box to box who gets up, who comes back. That's all I want. So that is why it's pretty much set to default on that one. Over on the left then winger we're going to have him on the attack duty and that is going to be balanced get further forward stay wider and run wide with the ball and roam from position selected standard with the pass and directness and these ones are obviously set to default when you use the role and the duty going over to the right hand side winger on the support duty this time so we've got one on the attack one on the support balanced on the trigger press get further forward stay wider roam from position run wide with the ball, standard on the directness of passing, and take more risks selected on this one. Going over to what is actually going to be a Tregista on the attack duty is going to be balanced on the press, standard with the pass and directness, and shoot less often just because I don't want him to have loads and loads of shots. And obviously, as you saw in Kunku already, they sort of drive into the box. So I'd rather him do that than just pop shots from the edge. Um, but again, that is something you possibly could tweak if you've got like... Trevista who has got crack and finishing possibly consider having that on but for me and to replicate it shoot less often is what was needed and going over to the goal scorer again a press and forward someone that is going to shut down and close in on that goalkeeper as we did see um, Andre Silva do very well trigger press is going to be on more often on this one obviously balanced when it or standard sorry on the pass and directness dribble more shoot more often and take more risks because at the end of the day he is our striker I know I said you don't want your striker getting all the goals, but I did also say they should be scoring most of them. And I stick by that. Strikers should be getting most of the goals and your wingers and your central attacker midfield player or Tregista should be getting some goals at least. But your striker, at the end of the day, his job is to put the ball in the back of the net. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. This is going to be the Marco Rose's tactic completely broken down. If you guys want to download this, the link is going to be in the description. It's completely free. You can simply download it click this here go to load and it will be in your computer download folder and that is a very simple way of translating what i've just explained into your game if you guys do enjoy this then be sure to leave a like on this video and please do subscribe to the channel but that is going to be it for me today guys and i'll see you in the next one